By seven in the morning of June 2nd, the Viking Aegir arrived in Belgrade, Serbia, the former capital of the state of Yugoslavia and today's Serbian capital. Belgrade is one of the oldest cities in Europe. Its location at the confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers and at the intersection of Eastern and Western Europe has long made it a contested region. Throughout its history, the White City, as its Serbian name translates, has been destroyed and rebuilt 20 times. Fortunately, the wide-reaching citadel remains housing the Kalemengdan Fortress, Orthodox churches, and green parkland. Its Cathedral of St. Sava is one of the largest Orthodox buildings in the world. About the fortress. Belgrade's imposing Kalemegdan Fortress is not only the signature landmark of the city, but also its namesake. Belgrade means white city, which is how it appeared to onlookers as they gazed at the fort, set on a white stone ridge on Kalemegdan Hill. In fact, the city was once entirely contained within this fort that was once called Singidunum, meaning Fort of the Singi, the Thracodacian tribe that originally settled here. Though the fort dates back to those Celtic times, what you see here now dates mainly to the 18th century. The outer gate and the inner Istanbul gate were built in the period between 1740 and 1789. Casemates, niches and rooms for the guard were situated inside the gates. The inner Istanbul gate, named after Istanbul, is the main gate for the fortress and is connected via a bridge to the clock gate. The Sahad or Clock Tower was erected in the period from 1740 until 1789, and to this day it has preserved its authentic architectural and stylistic Baroque characteristics. Barrel of the British Muscle Loading Cannon, 18th century, part of the Kalemegdan Military Museum. The hexagonal building in the central area of the upper town is the mausoleum of Damata Li Pasha, one of the few Turkish buildings still preserved in Belgrade. The formation of the inner fortification as a separate fortification unit had its early beginnings in 1151. This date fits well with a broader picture of efforts by the Byzantine Emperor Manuel Comnenus to reinforce the northern frontier of the empire against the Hungarian progression towards the south. The fortress offers great views of the Pannonian plain that sprawls out east of Belgrade. As mentioned earlier, the city lies at the confluence of the Danube and Sava rivers in north central Serbia, where the Pannonian plain meets the Balkan peninsula. The Victor is a monument built to commemorate Serbia's victory over the Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian empires during the Balkan Wars and the First World War. 
Erected in 1928 and standing at 14 meters high, it is one of the most visited tourist attractions in Belgrade and the city's most recognizable landmark. It is a standing bronze male figure with a falcon in the left hand and a sword in the right as symbols of peace and war. The statue looks forward across the confluence of the Sava and the Danube and over the vast Pannonian plain towards the very distant Frosca Gora mountain until 1918 a domain of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It is probably the most powerful and popular visual symbol of Belgrade. The Institute for the Protection of Cultural Monuments of Belgrade was established in 1960 for the purposes of exploration, studying, evaluation and protection of the cultural and historic heritage of Belgrade and of the Belgrade Fortress. Now in view is the Cara Georges Gate, built in 1750-1760. The Monument of Gratitude to France in Belgrade's Kalemegdan Park was formally unveiled on 11 November 1930, the 12th anniversary day of the end of the First World War. It was noted as one of the first public monuments on one national territory where the perception of another nation is shown in a positive light. Kalemekzan Park can also be accessed using the small staircase that takes you to the park's promenade above the Sava River. Death to Fascism, Freedom to the People was a Yugoslav partisan motto, later the official slogan of the entire resistance movement. The big staircase is the most monumental park motive. It occupies the area in the southwest front line of the fortress on the location of the former rampart and the hidden road. Unfortunately, since it was under reconstruction, I had to capture these two pictures from the internet in order to complete my travelogue. This area of the park offers a great view of the Victor Monument, built to commemorate Serbia's victory over the Ottoman and Austro-Hungarian empires during the Balkan Wars and the First World War. Aside from its many attractions and winding pathways, Kalemegdan is appreciated for its spectacular views. Stroll along the waterfront promenade and take in the confluence of the Sava and Danube rivers in the Pannonian plain sprawling out east of Belgrade. Today, Kalimekdan is a treasure trove of cultural and natural attractions, making it Belgrade's most popular park. The area includes 19 busts of famous Serbians and many gardens. There are several museums, including the Belgrade Planetarium, housed in a pavilion that was once a Turkish bath, the Belgrade Zoo, a natural museum, the military museum, the Zjveta Zorzoric Art Pavilion, and an art gallery in the Stambol Gate. The Church of St. Sava is one of the largest Eastern Orthodox Church buildings and ranks among the largest church buildings in the world. The church is dedicated to St. Sava, the founder of the Serbian Orthodox Church and an important figure in medieval Serbia. It is built on the Vrakar Plateau, 
on the location where his remains were burned in 1595 by Ottoman Grand Vizier Sinan Pasha. With a story that rivals that of Barcelona's famously incomplete Sagrada Familia, Belgrade's St. Saba Temple is an eternal work in progress, one that's existed in various stages of creation for more than 100 years. The plan for the temple was laid in 1893 and construction began in 1935, but work stalled for decades due to World War II and Serbia plunging into socialism as part of Yugoslavia. Then after the war, the communist authorities did not want to give this place back to Serbian church for 40 years. Then work finally continued in 1986 to stop again when the region plummeted into war yet again. Though the exterior of the building was completed in 2004, a step inside the temple today reveals just how much work there remains to be done. But at the bottom of a pristine marble staircase, the temple's completed underground crypt is a stunning and somewhat unanticipated sight. The archway accented room gleams with ornate gold chandeliers, Murano glass mosaics, and stunning frescoes. It's even warmed from below by a heated floor. The walking tour around the main pedestrian zone in Belgrade started at the Knez Mihailova Street, named after Prince Mihailo Obronovich, 
It was the first officially named street in Belgrade in 1870. Today it represents the main pedestrian zone towards which gravitates the entire Belgrade as it was for centuries. Right across the street from the little staircase is the monumental building of the French Embassy. In the vicinity of the little staircase are the Embassy of Austria, the Cathedral Church of St. Michael, the Archangel, the Museum of the Serbian Orthodox Church, and the residence of Princess Ljubica, among others. The Cathedral Church of St. Michael the Archangel is a Serbian Orthodox cathedral church built between 1837 and 1840 on the location of an older church also dedicated to Archangel Michael. It is one of the most important places of worship in the country. It is commonly known as just the cathedral among the city residents. It was proclaimed as a cultural monument of exceptional importance in 1979. The cathedral church is one of the few preserved monuments of Belgrade from the first half of the 19th century. During the times when new social and political structures were slowly emerging, the cathedral church became a central support in the independence fight from Turkish centralism to the final freedom from Ottoman rule. The Patriarchate building of the Serbian Orthodox Church was finished in 1935 and it houses a collection of ecclesiastical items, many of which were collected by Saint Sava, founder of the independent Serbian Orthodox Church. Now in view is the Viking Ager. The following video clips and pictures were captured from the vantage point of the tour bus window. <laughs> 